Well, my name is Rachel Klimek. I'm a first year doctoral student. The poster I'm presenting here actually came out of work I started this summer before I even officially began the program. And this is a culturally competent systematic review of palliative care research in developing countries. And it comes out of my passion as a former development worker. I spent a few years in West Africa. So that inspired this. But um, we know that palliative care is a need, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And actually, 80% of the global disease burden occurs in what we would refer to as developing countries. Also, 5.5 billion of the 6.7 billion of us on this planet tend to reside in those areas. So, in 2006, a group of 1,000 international scholars got together to create the Declaration of Venice, where they agreed that while we're making progress with palliative care research, it has not kept up in developing countries, particularly in light of things like the HIV-AIDS epidemic, which has really changed the playing field a lot. So we decided to do a culturally competent systematic review of the existing research in this area. And we decided in order to do this right, we really needed some international co-authors from those countries. So we recruited uh, Mirna Abi Abdallah Dumit from Lebanon, Busisi uh, Kunene from South Africa, as well as Fabiana Souza from Brazil, and my dissertation advisor, Marie Nolan, who works a lot with uh, China. So um, our methods were to do a systematic review. What's on this poster is just from PubMed. We looked at Embase, CINAHL, PsychInfo as well. We operationalized developing country by the World Bank standards for low and lower middle income economies. We used MESH terms that are outlined here as well as individual terms to search for palliative care, exploded, hospice, terminal care, research. We wanted to know how things had come in the last 10 years, so those were the limits. And by using those terms and then divvying it up by geographic region, we went from 1,411 research publications to a grand total of 17. What we then did was to engage our co-authors in looking at these research studies and getting their impressions as well. And we also decided to apply a framework for evaluating the cultural competence. So we used uh, Dr. Afaf Malais's criteria for cultural competency and scholarship. And that's outlined in this table here. There are eight criteria. So we graded each abstract according to these, uh, the presence of each criterion. And what we found is that of the ones that we could locate, every single one took into account contextuality, which is to say, the authors acknowledged the diversity in participants' lifestyles and their unique historical social contexts. But only five actually acknowledged an awareness of identity and power differentials, which is to say that the researcher often is in a sort of unequal position of power with participants, and you need to plan that into your design to get valid results. We also found by looking at affiliations of co-authors that only 11 out of the 17 studies included a co-author from the country where the study was taking place. And that's very important for infrastructure development. Also, the most of them were descriptive. Two program evaluations that weren't terribly quantitative, an interventional study and an instrument evaluation. Uh, now, these summary results are just preliminary all of our co-authors have seen them, but they're based primarily on myself and my American co-author's initial interpretation. And we can't possibly generalize to all of these countries. There is way too much diversity. Um, and one thing we did see as well is that India, for example, had the most studies, and then other areas scattered seem to be doing a little more, Brazil and South Africa. So obviously they're very different. But uh, we do see across the board there tends to be a lack of knowledge about palliative care, what it is, both on the part of patients and the community as well as providers. Many of these areas, such as Brazil, too, have a strong sense of family. Family members tend to be care providers. Um, poverty can be a significant barrier to obtaining care as well as governmental regulations. Uh, the WHO essential list of palliative medications is not available in many of these areas. Opioids are particularly hard to obtain in some areas, and some people are making progress with that. 
stigma plays a role, both for things like HIV AIDS, we've seen a lot of work in that, but also cancer, some phenomenological studies, um, phenomenological studies, sorry, showed us that. And uh, I think the overall message in looking at how many of these were kind of helicopter studies where the team sort of dropped in and maybe didn't leave a whole lot behind and how many really did work with the people there on the ground, um, there is that need perhaps to foster more um, sustainable interventions and research really incorporating co-authors from these areas who can continue that work um, even once the study is over. So these are just some limitations, again descriptive studies uh, maybe need to be built upon and we hope to have a Skype conference with all our co-authors to discuss the value of the method and they're also getting back to us with their individual critiques and their pieces of the co-publication.